Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. I am so excited about our guest today. And those of you that have been here yesterday and the day before, you know why. Glory to God. Dr. Avery Jackson, welcome to this broadcast, Thank sir. You, Chief Executive Officer, Medical Director of Michigan Inter Inter Neurosurgical Institute. I'm glad I'm not called to be that. I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. <laughs> preacher is easy. <laughs> um, Amazing preacher. Oh, well, no, thank you, sir, very much. And uh, our golden text, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, your whole soul, your inter the intellectual part of you, and your whole body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He has done it. And that's what this book is about. Amen. This whole book, from cover to cover is about spirit and soul and body. God started Adam that way. And it's, then he did what he did <laughs> and brought the breaking of this system. And over the, over the centuries, people have studied and, and sought after God. And the least understood revelation, I, I, I believe, in the Bible is the difference between spirit and soul and body. And, and you, can, you, you can immediately place people where they are. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the biblical order. The spirit is the never dying you. And you have a soul. <clears throat> that because that that proves it. That is that verse of scripture, and also in the book of Hebrews and, and, and other places. And the spirit man is the, the person that will live eternal, eternally. Uh, you know, whether you go to heaven or hell, you're a spirit being and you will live eternally. Mm. I realized from Brother Kenneth e. Hagin's teaching. He was talking about the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus talked about it. He said a certain man. So I'm, I'm totally convinced that as he, as he called Lazarus by his name. Mm. So the people that to whom he was speaking knew both these men. And, and he, he's, he's using this to teach the difference and it was a shocking revelation to me when Father Abraham, the rich man is in hell now. His body is topside someplace. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a brain, mm -hmm. the physical brain. Mm -hmm. But Abraham said, son, remember, Memory's intact. Yes, sir. Because his soul is intact. Yes, sir. And his memory, his, his, the intellectual part of him is still very much alive. It's functioning mm -hmm. better than it was when he was in his body because it's working 100% now. Mm -hmm. He remembers every little thing that happened to him, all of his existence, and he's going to have to remember that trash forever and ever 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 and ever. Now, his nature is still intact. He said, have Lazarus. He's still wanting to boss Lazarus around. And he's trying to tell Abraham what to do. Now, isn't it amazing that he knew who Abraham was? Mm. So my point being, let's deal with this thing now. Let's, let's do the things that, in, and that protect and, and, and enhance this brain and, and this body because the, the brain 
the brain is the tool of the mind. And whoa, I, I better do whatever it takes to keep this thing running. Particularly if I'm going to live out my, my, my full days on this earth, which in my case would be 120 years. And, and I, 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 I have made the choice and I have to continue to keep that choice in place to do whatever it takes. Now, like I said the day before yesterday, spirit, soul, and body is the biblical order. You'll hear people say body, mind, and spirit. We'll show you know right there. It's not, it's, it's not a, a, a scriptural revelation. Yes, sir. But we're talking today about body first and its effect on the mind because it's so serious. Mm -hmm. So take us back into this, this train of exercise and, 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 and how we can, how we can develop it in our lives. Because I've, I learned this even as a, a young man that by being an athlete and so forth, I was extremely competitive. And, I, and, and I'd, I'd go back to exercise and I'd just start trying to take up where I was before and it hurt me and I was, I ain't doing that anymore. I'm too busy anyway. And so, <laughs> but it has reversed my lifestyle. Mm. And used to, I was more awake and alert in the middle of the night and was that way from the time I was a little boy. I didn't sleep much. Mm. Well, that caused a lot of problems too. And, but over the years, the Lord helped me and reversed that. And now because of my hour to hour and a half or so praying, first of all, for all men, kings and all their in authority and so forth. And then my partners praise God all over the mm. world. And, uh, and so in order to take care of business, man, I mean, like this morning, I was, I was in prayer a little, oh, a little bit before six. So I had to get up, you know, quarter of five, happy to do it and get up and get in that exercise <laughs> workout an hour. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, this, this, this is a miracle in my life mm. and it's changing things. And you're supposed to be talking and not me. <laughs> it's just wonderful to hear you talk because you're so excited about it. I am. I am extremely excited. And so that's proof positive. I'm excited about it for the body of Christ yeah. because we have not had. Now, Dr. Colbert and men like that. Oh, yeah. We've had we've had uh, outstanding information. But this is coming from a neurosurgeon. And so we, we get, it's one thing, <laughs> it's one thing to talk to a guy that fixes flats in a service station yes, sir. and to talk to a man that builds engines. Mm. I want to know about the engine. I can fix a flat. I need to get inside that engine. I want to know what's going on in there. Mm. You know, Brother Copeland, you mentioned about the exercise and the choices that you made and also that your, your uh, what we call the circadian rhythm, which is your sleep wake cycles and patterns. You'll find that oftentimes when people uh, have work hours and God bless them, but you know, when they're, when they're topsy turvy, where you're up all night and you have to sleep during the day, that can create some challenges. It can create, uh, you have to really work on stabilizing your mood, your physical health. It's harder to exercise. And there's a weight that you feel on your spirit because of all of this flesh that we're wrapped in and it's kind of holding us down. And to be free uh, with that spirit, to be able to really focus on God's word, you, you, you can't focus inward. And so with the physical, as you mm. mentioned, going from the physical to the soul, to the spirit, if we have this, this, these physical issues, the tiredness and the fatigue, 
it's going to weigh us down and our soul, mind, will, and emotion, then is going to have a give attention to the physical and being tired. And that's going to take away that time that we need with the Lord and prayer and, and so forth as he tells us to do X, Y, and Z. It starts absorbing your life and then it, and, and you're, then you're down all the time. Yes, sir. Yeah, I see it. I and so there. the dopamine is a classic example. So we talked about that you, your, uh, your spirit, you have a mind, will, and emotion, you live in a physical body. Well, the physical body side includes your brain because your brain is separate than your mind. Yeah. Your brain is the physical processor of all the information that comes to your five senses. It gets wrapped up. There's a little memory loop there that starts the process. And then it slips into your mind, which is going to stay with you for eternity. And then so but the issue there is, is that if you're uh, while that processor is working, if it's not fed right, if it's not getting water, if it's not getting sleep or exercise, then the way that you process information is not going to be as effective as what you need to get it to the memory and to also help to supercharge your soul as we're talking about going from body to soul to, to spirit. And so that's so important. And it, you also mentioned about praying in the, in the heavenly language in tongues, mm -hmm. but that's an act of your will. Mm -hmm, it because is. Because especially if you're, hey, I don't want to get up and, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not sure if I completely 100% believe what, you know, what God's word says about what it'll do for me. If I'm not sure, if I have those doubts because of my soul, maybe because of uh, scenarios in the past, people I've talked to, what have you, but in doubt in that soul part will affect my spirit because then I'm not praying in the heavenly, my heavenly language and, and, and that loses, I lose my focus and then I'm not filled up or being refilled with the spirit, my, my measure of the spirit as I'm supposed to. Now, if I'm not praying in heavenly language, then I'm not gonna be listening when the Holy Spirit says, you need to exercise to get that body in shape and that's gonna have a, a cyclical pattern because all three are, are so are interwoven. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we know is if I'm in good shape, if my heart, my physical blood pump is working well, and let's say that yours or, or my, the body of Christ around me isn't, there was a study looking at what happens when we come together corporately. And when you look at when we come together corporately, uh, there's a study that says that when we have relationship, which takes effort, but when we have relationship, our hearts, the heartbeats literally sync up. Wow. So how now so that you're approaching quantum physics here and I, I'm liking this. Yeah. Whoa, glory yeah. to God. So it sinks up. So can I be a So if that should be the absolute truth with you and your spouse. Yes, sir. All the time. And strife can mess that up. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. And the strife messes up your brain. Yep. Mm, mm, mm. yep. And so and so that's an important piece. So the other piece is the way that God made us. People say, well, does God love me? Now, let me ask you yeah. something here, Dr. Jackson. Yeah. Uh, when our, our physical hearts begin to, to agree, uh, I can see, huh, the scientific law of synergy, if you put two equal forces together, you get the force of three. Mm. Now, spiritual synergy, it's one put a thousand to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight. Any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. Mm. So we need to be in agreement in our love walk, so synced. Oh man, I just see a, 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 a ministry staff. There must not be any strife. Amen. There must not be. Strife is so dangerous. It, 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 it is to the kingdom of God what, what serpents and snakes are to the natural world. Yes, sir. It is so dangerous. Mm. So I can see this, well, you talk. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of. Yeah, and so sink, sinking uh, is is something that happens when we're in agreement, and the heart literally sinks. And when they come together, that can help with certain conditions. So it's really interesting because you pour this love out to the people around you, but you can't do that if you're in physical pain. 
You can't do that if you have emotional trauma that turns you inward and there's a, an emotional pain that you have, then it's a, it's a challenge to be able to connect and have that relationship that we're supposed to have physically. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. And so even thinking about uh, the joy that you have of being with someone that you love, that increases your dopamine, your brain uh, chemicals, your feel-good chemicals, and reinforces memories that you've had about and with that person that you've created. So your brain's got, you know, the memories are going because you pull those memories back and then you feel it because of the chemicals go throughout your body and you feel good, you feel revived because you remember the last time you were together, you laughed and you had a good time. And now you're more likely to exercise because you're, you know, your mood's different. You're not depressed. I can see that. Mm. And then on the other hand, the, then the more you exercise, more it increases the, um, the other side of the equation. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, um, go ahead with that. I, I got so, particularly, you're talking about your lifestyle and what you have to do and the commitment that you have made. And, and I can see that commitment now because uh, exercise is, is a part of your tools. You have to do this. Yes, sir. And my wife is very kind, as I mentioned, because we don't have a lot of time, and so my, my days can run long. I'll be in the operating room <clears throat> operating either in a brain surgery case or a spine case, and that case can be anywhere from one hour. We've had 16-hour, uh, even 24-hour hour, hour long cases. So you come out of the surgery, and you get home, and you have to find a place to exercise your, your spirit, your soul and your body. And so immediately I get home and when I'm talking to my wife, I'll perform jumping jacks. So the Holy Spirit said, well, you know, here's some things that you can do. Cause I said, well, I'm running out of time. I don't have much time. And he said, that's no excuse. <laughs> no, you gotta still do it, right? Take care of your health. You gotta take care of all three parts of you. So anyway, jumping jacks while we were talking. I, 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 uh, pardon me for interrupting yeah. you, but I, I, I have to get back to this. Yeah. Because I can see it where, I, where I, my life and ministry is concerned. Mm. Exercise is to you. And the longevity of your practice and the health of other human beings, what a rifle is to a soldier. Yes, sir. Now you cannot, you must not, you can't put up with a nasty, filthy weapon, it'll get you killed. Mm. And I saw it just flashed. I've never seen that before. It's a tool to your trade. You have to do it. And you know, just to piggyback off of exactly what you said, when I'm in surgery, when I'm synced up with the Holy Spirit, because when I operate, I listen to the Holy Spirit and I follow His peace and then I do the right things and I don't hurt anybody. But if I'm not synced up because I'm not exercising and my, my, my attitude's bad because I'm tired, I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit, then somebody gets hurt in surgery. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I can see that. Glory to God. Praise. Father, thank you for that. Oh, my glory, Jesus. Now, continue with this and, and, and how that... Um, well, you, you just be led of the Lord and take us, take us deeper into this. You know, uh, going back to the children, if I could, because that's such an important subject, is, is that we form our, our brains at different stages uh, of, of development from the time we're, we're younger. And our brain doesn't fully form until the age of 25 or 26. And so when we are introduced to these uh, these emotional issues, that has an effect and informs how we see the world and has an effect on our bodies and has an effect on our emotional state. So you have situations where what is supposed to be right or is supposed to be wrong is flipped. And so now you're looking at what is wrong and you say it's right. And I believe it's because of one of the things could be what happened back then in your brain and your emotions. And that has a huge implications on your physical body. 
the way that seems right to a man, but it's the way of death. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, in particular, as a physician, you know, I, I care for all people. It doesn't matter what sex you are, race. None of that matters to me. It's about how can I be of help to you? There are certain populations of people that have a higher rate or risk of depression and physical challenges. And that is when you, when you talk about uh, gender issues. And it's an important piece because, and I, I think people are focused on the wrong thing. They're focused on the physical side and decisions made, but they're missing the spiritual side mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. missing the solical side. And my heart goes out to people when they have an increased risk of infection, increased depression in those populations. And it ought not be. It ought not be. And again, I go back to that time when something happened, an abuse or uh, a misinterpretation of what happened and then how that informs certain decisions. And then you get to a situation now where you say physical anatomy and this and well, that's not that's all wrong. This is what's right. And it doesn't make any sense. So for me as a surgeon, I study anatomy. I know the physiology. So to tell me that the anatomy and physiology is different than what than how God created it and its function is flabbergasting to me. And it bothers me when that happens and it affects people and uh, and it affects them in all three areas. Uh, and so and so I, I think that's kind of a hidden piece because we're focused on the th one third, which is the physical. But we're, we're missing some of the real underlying mm -hmm. techniques as far as soul and also spirit. Missing the roots. The roots. Yes, sir. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Now, how do you combine your exercise, your physical exercise? How do you combine that uh, with praying in the spirit? Ah. So your spiritual exercise. Yes, sir. So uh, being word of faith, Bishop Keith Butler and Pastor Deborah, they're just amazing teachers and they love the Lord and they let the Holy Spirit move throughout the service as well as the teaching. So that's kind of interesting because their posture is the teaching as well as praying in the, uh, the heavenly language and, and letting the Lord move at the same time. Yeah. Right. So for me, as an, for me, it's no different. So while I'm academic in my, my, my exercise, my research and how I do what I do in my brain, the Holy Spirit is always welcomed and he's always a part of that. Oh yeah. Amen. Right. Praise so, God. so the Holy Spirit said, when you exercise dance in the spirit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And now yeah. you get your your exercise. So we know that if there's with heart with uh, heart issues, cardiac issues, that if you have a sedentary professional lifestyle, six to eight hours of either sitting or standing, your risk of having a heart attack or stroke is, is pretty high. And those are the big killers here in the United States. And we're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.